Hey, welcome back guys. Uh, this is Paintbology 101, uh, some textbook paintball with me, Joe Barrett, and um, this is another episode on snakeside textbook play. Um, today's episode, I basically wanted to bring you guys examples from the World Cup field since it was the most recent one, and I'll show you how to apply some of the things from that last two videos um, to an actual field that we saw playing. Um, so on this field, on the snake side, it was definitely a 3-2 field or 3-1-1. Either way, it was it was at least three people. Certain teams even had four players over snake side from your front player, your corner, and two guys in this home shooting each way. The home was actually, it wasn't at the center. It was a little bit more snake way on this layout if you, if you didn't play World Cup. But it still acted as basically the home bunker. It shot and contained both ways pretty decently decently enough at least, and it was decent to fill and insert each way or at the center of the field. Um, back to the point, there was always generally three or more people over here. Very, very uncommon for a team to try two guys over here and try to fit three people into that D side where there was only really two makeable spots off break between that Aztec about 20 feet out this way and then a D corner that you would have behind me. Um, so with these three, Guys going snake way, the place they basically always went to on every single team across the board was corner off break was pretty much almost guaranteed with a straight wire like that. It's a very, very strong bunker, very easy to live in and very easy to contain and dominate snake side and then wrap as you shoot the players out of the snake and contain even better. Um, you had this home bunker, which was normally where your three guy is, your, your middle insert guy, and then you normally had um, your insert guy either double up at home, go to one of these two tall cakes, or possibly go to God, depending on how the break I had. Uh, oftentimes, teams would have uh, their player come out to this tall cake shooting cross field for the Dorito corner. Sometimes they'd have him shoot heads up because he can see the gap between the God and the direct gap in front of the snake very clearly. Whereas the home bunker had to be real low and could only shoot about a foot before the snake gap itself. Um, so basically, you, you, you knew it was going to be something like this. There was going to be two guys back here, and your middle guy was going to be either going to one of these two bunkers or possibly right to snake off break. Um, why it's risky to have him go right to snake off break is because with a layout like this where you're always going to corner, now you have two guys going through the same lane. And then whether it's their home guy, their cake guy, somebody running up the middle, um, basically you just increase their odds on getting a G somewhere or other. You know, if they were shooting for your corner player and you only had a snake runner, he's probably going under the paint. Whereas vice versa, if they're shooting for the snake, snake runner and you only have a play going to corner, you're way back behind the paint. You're going to make it to your bunker safely. But if you run both those spots constantly off break, which many teams did, it's it's difficult to always have both spots make it in because this lane's gonna be in front of one of those two wide spots. Um, so what you basically had to make a higher probability play is you had a lot of teams stack that, that third guy somewhere in this back middle area and then delay or edge their way to the snake. Uh, basically that would allow them to get a second steady gun up to shoot a runner this way. And it would take away um, you know, some of the paint that was in the air right off the break for him while that corner player is running out. Now when he decides to move and leave, he can leave on his gun edging people in, or he can just go right to the snake, which hopefully will be underneath lanes that are just held on the corner player, the player that they see got widest out of the field. Um, so let's put a good uh, high probability break out on the board and I'll show you why it had success basically regardless of how things played out. Um, if you had a center shooter shoot wide for the runner, a player run off break to the corner and then shoot down the wire, hoping to either shoot someone diving in the snake or get dominance on his mirror making it in, and you had this second guy delay with your home shooter, this was a pretty high probability breakout. All right, breakout. You'll see Teams like Art Chaos and Impact and Damage use this play frequently and have all three of their players at least make the make their bunkers at the beginning of the game. And um, 
at least, at the very least, that, that assures that you will be able to slow the field down and play a long point. You know, you might not shoot anybody off break guaranteed every single time, especially with a lot of pins on this particular field and a lot of downfield cluster from this home's vantage point. But at least you'll have someone wide and you'll have your other two players alive able to make moves still. Um, this extra player could have also came to this tall cake and shot heads up, giving him a better lane for people coming past the cake or god going into the snake and giving him a chance to put in his mirror or the home to make his move all the way out here. So uh, let's put some let's put some uh, situations on the board and just explain how they work well every single time. Okay, so off break. If you whether you shot somebody or not, if you use this breakout, Hank would draw wide to that corner after he made it in, and this second guy was normally able to pretty easily get into that snake and start moving up the field. Um, basically, how you're going to play this next is have him play the situations I broke down last time too. If no one's in the snake with him, you know, the, the nearest guy for them got to the corner or to God, he could go to the 50 and kill people out of that Dorito side. It was a very tough D side to live from the snake, and that's why you didn't want your snake players in this layout to mess around in the first or even second match. You know, the sooner they got to that 50 or past it, it was the sooner they were shooting just entire sides out of their bunkers and then able to just get up face to face and go trade with the snake guy on their side of the field in front of them. Um, if somebody did get into the snake with them, then play it the same. Still get to that 50 and draw all the guns from the other side, but play heads up and wait till that nearest threat in front of you came to get you. So you basically always, as a snake front player, want to get in here and pass these two notches immediately. And if you were past this 50 point, you know, you're doing pretty good. And I, I didn't see a ton of teams lose with the first guy getting to the snake 50 just because he would either A, get a lot of kills off the other side of the field and free up your Dorito side, or B, he'd be on their side of the 50 and he would basically bait people to throw their bodies away to come get him. And they would come trade out with him, they would come and get chewed up by his other two insert players, etc. Um, so, Basically, off of that, that other uh, you know, lesson that I was showing you in the last video, you wanted these two guys to shoot the wide guy, whether it was the corner or the runner, but more often than not, the way people were delaying in these back bunkers, you were shooting the corner off and clearing that tape for yourself, and then you wanted to make your move. If you did this right, you would hit the wide guy, get into your bunker, and your corner player would be already in his bunker, getting his paint up on that tape. Since there's nobody making it out there, he's going to put his paint straight up this line in front of the guy. Now, when the next insert player tries to bump out past the guy, whether it be filling back to the corner or going into the snake, he has to fight somebody outside wrapping, containing in on and this back home gun. So if he puts in the outside one, he has to wrap all the way around his bunker and start fighting the home, or he has to put in the home from the inside of his bunker and then hopefully be able to wrap and put in the outside guy as well. That's a lot of difficulty to do, especially against two decent, you know, sh decent shooting players. Um, next step was basically how you use this home player. On a layout like this with such snake side dominance, this corner player, although he was, uh, you know, the first one to go out wide, he's not really the snake insert. In fact, I would say this was more of the anchor bunker on this layout because once you were in there, if you went in with a lot of paint, you really didn't have to leave this spot. You could let your home guy bump in front of you safer under the paint than you running up to follow up your snake front player. So you would stay in here controlling the wire, and if the wire was already dead, you would already shot their wide guy, you would just contain inward from the outside of your bumper. You're now completely safe from the Dorito side, the X, anything in the center, and nobody is going to be able to bump this way. This third guy is now freed up to follow his snake player. When the snake player gets to a certain point, he's gonna have all those guns, if you remember, from the opposite side, keeping themselves alive just by shooting at him. And although they're not doing his job, he's not gonna be the one to shoot them out. That's when this third player, who is pent up back at home, is going to come in behind him, possibly up to the snake two, 50 area, or whatever, one notch behind him, as long as he's just not in the same part of the snake. And he's gonna start seeing those hoppers sticking out of bunkers, shooting at the guy in front of him, and that's how you're going to start getting G's off of that.
Um, the last thing that was good about a play like this is if you had shot this wide guy off break, um, if that was your if and it happened, you could trap up their third guy who would be basically trying to do what you're trying to do. Uh, not a lot of people knew this except for maybe in the pro and div division one, but at the home or the tall cake, you could shoot back at the space of the tall cake and bounce the balls directly into the home. And if it didn't kill him, it at least made this player have to play honest from snake side and tight to the D side. If he looked back this way, even though he can't see paint coming in, he might catch a random ball out of nowhere from this bounce shot off the cake into his home arena. So basically, you can picture it. You now have a snake guy attacking down the field. You have an uh, anchor type player who is your snake insert, but he's, he's actually more of your, your back player on this type of layout. Containing the wire if there is someone in that corner. If not, he's containing inward. And you have this home player either putting paint back at the home, making it so he has no way to fight this way to try to fill wide, or moving to follow his snake player, look for those kills cross field on the guys posting up on him. And that was basically how you uh, had to break down this situation every single point on this World Cup field. So uh, I hope that kind of shed some light on how to use some of the little audibles and if-then situations on a real field uh, example. You can see real life examples of this play or this uh, breakout being used on this field by going to paintball access and watching uh, multiple matches of impact in particular. You'll often see their fast small front player Justin Cornell go right to the god or snake off break with a good anchoring back player going like Rainy Stanzak going to this corner off break. And then you'll see their other insert players like the Yakamex or Justin Ravikoff come from this home Dorito and basically play the situation accordingly. You know, if they had shot somebody off break, he might go up the middle, he might come into an insert bunker shooting at a bounce shot. If the game got long and drawn out because everybody made it wide downfield, you would see Justin do what I told you by coming in behind his snake front player and using those back notches to work out people dug in cross field. Um, so I hope you can uh, find some use in those examples. And maybe when you see this situation going on next time, you can have better success in it yourself. Good luck.